it's it's a good thing, and I think I you know to encourage people to write their story down, and it could be in a journal, and they share it with their family or whatever. If they want to put a book out, cool, you know, whatever you want to do. Um, but it's good to get things on, you know, put pen to paper. So is that the advice you would give to new writers? Is put the pen to paper and just get it, get it accomplished? Uh, yes, absolutely. And for me. Um, I didn't know how to do that. You know, I have all these thoughts, mm -hmm. but to put the pen to the paper for me, I'm a horrible student. I'm a horrible, like, do that sort of responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I found somebody to help me with it. And this great writer, and he, uh, we sat down for four years and went through this thing. And he uh, took what I said and then put it in there. But then I scrubbed the whole thing out word by word. It was a painstaking process. But if people want to write something down, I totally encourage it. And again, whether it's in a journal or whether it's in a book or whatever it is, um, it's really good to get pen to paper. It lets your mind kind of let things go. And I think it's really cool. And another thing I think is really cool is so many people have such an interesting story that they don't tell other people about. There's gotta be something really interesting about that. And when you read something, and I love autobiographies, I just love them. It's very fascinating to me and philosophy and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, I encourage people to do it. It's not an easy task. I'll tell you that much. For me, it wasn't. For some people, maybe it is. I don't know. But for me, I'm like, oh God, this is a brutal experience. <laughs> But I'm glad I did it. You know, I'm glad I did it. And it's, it's been a fun, uh, fun adventure. And, um, but the main thing for me, I got to say, is that it lifted a weight off my shoulders. You know, you got to find somebody to help. I had no idea people would enjoy it. And that wasn't my intent. My intent was just to go, hey, kids, here's my story. <laughs> you know what I mean? I swear to God. But, um, but other people are enjoying it. And I, I appreciate that. And it's cool. It's humbling. And, We're making books, audio books, for business founders, business owners. And so this is our new project for the future or that we're doing now. Okay. Um, and uh, it's very exciting to meet successful owners and to talk with them. And there's so many uh, of the same business philosophies and principles that we learned that they are learning. But as a company grows, it's often a, a problem in uh, their organization that people tend to get siloed and they're not talking to each other anymore. And so uh, the idea of putting together an audio book for the founders of these companies is to engage their employees. So they understand that the owner is a real person and had real struggles and maybe even did the job that the employee is doing now uh, in the beginning because entrepreneurs do all the jobs in the beginning. They wear every hat there is that has to be worn. And that allows the employees to uh, engage more in the company and see their, their employer as someone who's a real person who's authentic. What an interesting area to go into. Um, please share with us any advice you would have for new writers. Well, I would say, uh, you know, what we've learned about writing is don't be afraid to get professional help. Okay, that's number one. Uh, the second thing is there's a lot of things about writing that is going on in the environment that you should make yourself aware of so you don't write yourself into a box. Like for instance, with audiobooks, the audiobook uh, retailers, online retailers, they give a sample of the audiobook, but their samples are always the first, um, you know, four or five minutes of the audiobook. Well, what if you have, you know, the cast of characters, you know, the various chapters, uh, the forward, and a few things like that? You're going to get cut up before you ever get in the story. You have to go right into the thunderstorm. You see, you have to go right into whatever is the most exciting thing in the story because that's your chance to grab that buyer and get him to push the buy button and buy your book. So if you know that, 
going in. It's really important. You also have to know things like, you know, uh, people's attention span. You know, their attention span is about 25 minutes. So you, if you're going to tell stories, you want to tell stories that are probably two to four minute stories and string them together in a 25 minute chapter. Uh, there's a relationship between the number of words uh, and the amount of time that it takes to uh, present or even read it. So you have to think about all that. So yeah, there's, there's, a lot, uh, there's a lot of advice that we can give writers, that's for sure. One thing that our writer, Rick Cushman, uh, taught us was uh, how to take all of these stories um, like this much and bring it into that much by cutting it down. How do you know which ones to cut it down? And you do a good job in telling this story. Go ahead. Yeah, so I said, Rick, I said, you got this book you wrote for us or with us. It's eight inches thick. How are you going to get it down to five eighths of an inch thick? Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, that's about as thick as your book wants to be. Um, and um, he said, oh, well, he said, they asked the sculptor how he was going to make the image of the king out of the block of marble. And he said, well, it's easy. I'll just chip away everything that doesn't look like the king. And so the idea here is, <laughs> what does the king look like? Yeah. You know, uh, what, is the, what is the overriding principal message of your story? So writers need to be thinking about that before they put their pen to paper. You know, what is the simple message? And not what are all the messages, but what's the simple message? And then, then think about all the messages that support or describe or, you know, uh, emphasize, yeah, emphasize those points. But you got, you got to get it down. I mean, write another book if you got another idea. You know, selling books is tough. It's really tough. You know, you do a lot of promotion and you sell 10 books, right? Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's not, yeah, it's, it's sad. Yeah. It's sad. You don't, you don't, you don't make money as a writer, uh, but you can, you can get the word out to certain people, uh, who are buying, like we have schools that buy our books and stuff like that. Uh, and when mm -hmm. we, when we were speaking, we would include a hundred books with our speaking fee. Oh. So then we would be able to give people the books but you have to figure out a way to give the books away rather than trying to think that you're going to sell them. Michael says it's a, a calling card. It's a business card. Mm -hmm. It is. Hi, this is who I am. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, if you're an author, you know, you really want to be a coal miner because you've got to pay your bills and you do that by mining a coal mine. And then you hope that when you speak or that when somebody reads your book, that they'll have a mine and they'll hire you to mine their coal mine. Yeah. See, so that's how you have to kind of look at it. It's it's not you're not going to be you're not going to get rich writing a book or publishing a book. You know, I mean, it's glorious. <laughs> I mean, it's it's very romantic, like the wine business, but it doesn't pay. I think for you, it will segue you into your, your other ideas, other things that you, you do for people. Well, it's I'm hoping like so. Yeah, I'm hoping so. And, and we're hoping that this idea of becoming uh, uh, audiobook, theatrical audiobook producers in the, in the business world uh, will, will turn a profit. We're hoping that it will. Because if we can get founders to say, you know what, I'm not going to live forever. I have to leave a legacy. This looks like a good way. It's cheaper than a video mm -hmm. and more likely to be listened to. And I can put it on my website and it's a small file. I can down file, download it and stuff. If we can get that word out, if we can find people, you know, so that's why we have an affiliate program. So anybody who brings us a candidate that actually signs a contract you know, we embrace them. And the guy that we're looking for, he's been in business for 10 years. He's the founder, he's the owner, and he's the president. And he still controls the budget in his own company. Or but, she. But after 10 years, he knows it's a personnel, you know, battle every day. He knows it. Mm -hmm. and, and he has 100 employees. And the reason he has 100 employees is so that when he sees the cost of the theatrically performed audiobook, it doesn't look like very much compared to his budget. Yeah. 
So, and also if he has a hundred employees, he wants to give the book to his employees. He wants to say, here's, here's my story. You guys, I wasn't born with a spoon in my mouth. You know, this is what I had to do to get this job together for you, to get this business together for you, to build these clients. This is the true story. And uh, maybe you'll identify with me and my challenges and my principles and, and maybe you'll work harder and maybe you won't leave my company. Maybe you'll be more loyal and uh, maybe you'll become, you know, uh, 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 more, uh, what's the word for it? Apostolic. You'll be telling people about what a great place it is to work. So I was going to ask you the advantages of the business audio theater over a standard audio book. Well, aside from the point that Bonnie made, which is that it's truly mobile, you're not tethered to a screen or a page. <clears throat> the other advantage that I mentioned earlier is that it's experiential learning. So you're, mm -hmm. you're, you're imagining the scenes and you're bringing up the, the, the props from your own memory, uh, which makes it stick with you. But I, I guess the most uh, exciting advantage is that it's more entertaining. You can hear intonation. You know when somebody's upset, you know when they're happy, you know when they're sad, you know when they're shocked. Uh, so you're getting that emotional message that you just don't get off the page. Uh, you're also getting sound effects, which is very interesting because it, it adds to the drama. Uh, and then you're getting music and the music can be anything from, you know, uh, the sound, uh, you know, uh, of Jaws, you know, in a, in a terrible situation that's getting closer, uh, or it could be, you know, uh, a beautiful symphony uh, on, a, on a lovely day. But the idea is that that's another form of communication. And so those, those are great. The other thing is, it's a whole lot cheaper, if you will, or less expensive than video. If you wanted to do a, a movie, uh, that would be very expensive, very big operation. And so this is like for a fraction of the cost. So, so what we're really saying is the, the advantage of this is you can do it, you can use it a lot of ways. You can use it as an onboarding tool. Hi, you wanna work for a company, listen to this. Or how about this? Don't even think about working for our company until you've heard this. Uh, or how about this? We're going to put it on our on our website and let people download it and listen to it for free, so they get some idea that our company really did come from a garage or a laundry room or a roll up, and that we weren't you know born with a golden spoon in our mouth, uh, and that we had to scramble, um, so that you'll have more appreciation for what we've done and, and identify with it, and maybe you'll want to work for us a little longer, and 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 maybe you'll want to become more engaged. Uh, maybe you will identify with our goals. You know, after all, you know, we are interested in the environment. We are interested in equal hiring. Uh, we're interested in equal pay. Uh, we're interested in customer service. These are the kinds of things that you can communicate in audio. And the, the, I think the last thing is that the owner doesn't have to be in the first person. It's not, I did this, I did that. It's the mm -hmm. character who plays the owner does it. So you, you get a chance to communicate with people in the third person, which is a wonderful way for a founder to get his message across without sounding patronizing. What inspired you to become a writer? There's nothing worse than being out of work. <laughs> okay. Whenever I sold any of those businesses, the first one was when I sold the oil business, for a chunk of money and I retired and I went to England just because I love England as a country. I love the countryside, like the people. But I had no work. I had nothing to do. And unemployed is awful. The days drag on. So you've got to find something to do. And that's why I did these various jobs like working for the NEA and the Irish Health Service Development. They were to keep myself busy. But when eventually we sold the last business, Green Man Toners, I was in the same situation. Only now I was 74. So I was not young enough to start up another business. But the reality is that writing is a business. Writing is very much a business. And uh, what started me into it was my children and my wife. I wouldn't say pressured me, but persuaded me constantly, say, Freddie, but 
through all these different adventures, write them down and tell us what happened and so that we know that whenever you're gone, we can look back. So that's what started me. I wrote it as a private business, a private book at, at home. It never published it, just a hundred copies for friends. That was 10 years ago. But uh, time passed and one night I had an experience where I got a, a yen, a yearning to, to write a book about Rockefeller and, and, and Gumbenkian. That's a book I could tell you about, quite a lot about if you give me time, but that prompted me to say, I'm going to write about this. And when I started to write it, I wrote it and it's written, but it's waiting to be edited. It's not ready for publication yet. But that got me back into the habit of writing and I realized I loved it. When you sit down to write, uh, it's wonderful. So you, do you write longhand or do you type onto a computer? I do a combination of things. I write longhand and then dictated by um, dictation. If you're writing longhand, Jeffrey Archer, for example, is probably one of the best known writers in these islands. Uh, he's probably written 15 to 20 successful books. Many of them turn into movies. He writes longhand. So I take my my consolation from him. I'm not unique. If, he can, if it works for him, nothing wrong with doing it. I find it gives me the opportunity to think and rethink and rethink again. It's easy with a pen and paper or pencil and paper to cross out words and put a new word in. It's very much easier doing that than on a computer. Would you share with us any advice that you would have for new writers? I'd be glad to, especially that last point. I was thinking about how would would talk about writing a new book. You know, it's actually, and this has been an old, an old little thought for me and that made it a surprise. It is actually starting a business. When you start to write a book, you actually start to write a business. The same thing is, you come up with the concept and you, you, you fall in love with that concept or you don't. If you don't, you won't write the book. If you fall in love with it, then you've got to decide uh, the facts, research, you must identify your market. Many people make the mistake of writing a book for themselves. Okay, nothing wrong with that. But the normal that normality would be to write a book for a de designated target market. So you've got to think, is there a market? Would they buy it? That's the marketing. That's the, the, then you, you presumably you know how to write. You can spell. Most important thing is to have a, a Rouget's Theosaurus beside you that you can look up words that you aren't quite clear uh, sure of uh, their application. The un unusual thing they'll find when they start to write, and somebody has put this in a book, just write. Just don't talk about it. Write. Start writing. And and big sheet of paper and a pen and pencil. I think that's better than a computer because it makes you think, think more. And out of your brain will come thoughts, words, and recollections that you didn't know you had. It's almost like a miracle. And that's why the Theos Horus is there. I find words come into my mind that I've never actually articulated before. I must have read them somewhere, but my brain has it. And I look up to the Theos Horus and there's the word, and it says, yes, it's appropriate for that line. So there would be my, my uh, and be prepared for hard work. It's very laborious, painstaking. And finally, edit, edit, edit and edit again. It doesn't matter how many times you edit, there was still, uh, one of my writers, one of my readers yesterday pointed out two mistakes in, in my book. It's a little ones. Uh, you will have heard of a Stucker aircraft, a German aircraft called Stucker. Uh, you will have heard of that, Paul, I'm sure. Well, there's two kids and I only had one kid. It was Smith Spelt. And uh, when we, when the British, you, when, the, when the army, the American and British Forces invaded France. I called it Overlord. In fact, it's not Overlord. It was like another name. I've forgotten it now. So there's always be some little thing you miss. I don't know if that helps or not, but it's a great bit of fun writing. I would encourage people to do it and enjoy it. Start to tell the book, you don't realize you're starting a business because when you've made the book, created it, published it, nobody knows. If nobody knows. Uh, it's a, it's a, a challenge. So, so what are you doing to market your book? Publisher Weekly, a magazine called Publisher Weekly, uh, are doing uh, are re doing a, a paid forty dollars, 
No, for $100, mm -hmm. to have it reviewed. And that review will be out uh, by the 5th of, the, of January. And we'll use that to, to try and tell people it's worth reading and so on. But, uh, New writers, I would say uh, what you want to do is uh, write the book that you need to tell, not the book you think that that people are going to like or that or that uh, agents are going to like or or that publishers are going to publish. Um, they're going to hear a lot of noise out there uh, about this and that and how to do this and how to do that. And 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 then you just need to 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 get rid of the noise and write your book, write every day, write at the same time, or just set up your schedule, but write every day until it's done. And then <clears throat> when it's done, uh, proof it, uh, uh, synthesize your voice, you know, uh, uh, make sure it's exactly the way you want it. And then I would say, uh, hire a, hire a, um, uh, an editor to edit it. And that will take it to the next level. You, you won't always agree with with what the editor says, and that's okay because it's it's uh, you know there are different perspectives there, and you and you need to talk about it. But 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 that person, the editor, will take you to a, to another level of of, uh, of greatness. Really, I read that when asked what three things do you tell a successful writer, you responded, market, 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 as far as people what they need to do to become successful. Yeah. I hate to say this, but writing the book is the easy part. Yeah. You, you may have the best book in the world, the most, most thrilling, most interesting, the, the most detailed, but if you, if you cannot get it to the right place at the right time and let everybody know about it, it it's, you're, you're, it's just going to take up shelf on your book, uh, on your, uh, on your, uh, your bookcase. And, and uh, it's not going to go anywhere after that. Um, what you need to do marketing uh, is a uh, is a constant job. You have to continually um, uh, build your build your platform, uh, build the author platform, uh, including um, uh, uh, website and uh, printed materials, anything like that. You you have to uh, continually network with people. You have to continually. Uh, uh, keep your, keep your information fresh. You know, you can't let it go more than two or three weeks, uh, two or three weeks without having some kind of a change to, to what you're doing. And, uh, but, but the, the, your platform, like you are the business as a, as a writer, you are, you are your own business. You, you have been all your life. You've been your, your own, every time you have an inter, a job interview, you're selling yourself every time, every day at work, you're selling yourself to say, ah, I did this, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worth being here. I should have a raise. I should have a promotion. That, that is what, that's what you're doing. But in the book world, it's the same thing. And, and if you, um, is, and I say that it's nonstop because if your name isn't Patterson or Balducci or, Lee Child, etc., Conley, uh, the the agents and the and the uh, uh, and the publishers are not going to do it for you anymore. You know, with the onset of the internet and that, they're not going to do it for you anymore unless unless you're a proven entity uh, that has proven to be to to make a, a ton of money uh, for them, not for you, but for them. <laughs> is is the, it's all they're thinking about is their money, not yours. So, but anyway, uh, you you. Um, you need to, uh, to to continually and continually market, and and, and the, the day you think you're done, you're not done because you got to market some more, and, um, and and there's always somebody that hasn't hasn't heard about you. You're, you're uh, and so you you got to make your 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 face out there known. You got to get uh, a special a special uh, uh, subject here is is reviews uh, reviews on uh, on on. Uh, uh, especially Amazon, maybe Goodreads, uh, some other places are very critical to, to the reason that people will say, oh, I'll pick up this book and, and, uh, and read it. Uh, so, uh, you know, in the end, that's, that's what you're doing. You're just kind of marketing, marketing, marketing all the time. And, and, and until you get tired of it, you know, I mean, that's basically you, you have to, you have to market yourself and your book. How did you build such a strong presence on social media? 
Um, <clears throat> well, uh, that that's a, a, a good story. My this is my philosophy. It's not anyone else's. But but what I what I did was was I didn't just say, "Look at me, I'm a celebrity, uh, and I've got two million followers, and and, I, and I'm following maybe fifteen, right? That is not how you. I mean, in certain brands, you, you might say, oh, you know, this person is kind of interesting, so I'll follow them. But what but what's really happening is that there it's all about me when you get the, the two to two million and it's not about your followers. But so what you have to do is um, is you have to interact with your followers. You have to you have to exchange ideas. You have to talk to them. You have to do this. And and I have an. Uh, uh, I have a bit over 80,000 uh, followers on Twitter, for example, but I also follow 75,000. Uh, so so um, it's, it's all about understanding the people, knowing them, asking questions, uh, relating to the people. And when you do that, then, then you get millions of eyeballs on, on your book that you didn't have before. Even with the 80,000, you're, you're getting... I get probably three million a day eyeballs to to uh, to to look at to to look at something that I've done it's because the the people that the people that you are interacting with you know uh, you quote unquote you know as best you can over uh, any sort of a uh, media sort uh, uh, environment. So um, so so my my the way I've done it is just kind of interact with people, make them, make them quote unquote friends, make them and, and do things for them. You know, you, if they, if they uh, retweet yours, you retweet them. If they repost yours, you, you, re, you repost their, theirs too as well. I mean, it's, it's just a, uh, it's just a kind of a common sense sort of a, a, of a deal. I mean, yes, you can, you can get, you, you can get, um, you know, a hundred thousand followers and, and follow still 10 or 15. And, and uh, I, I see a lot of, I see a lot of people do that, but, but it, I also look at, at their posts and I say, I've never heard of this guy. He's got 2 million, 2 million friends. It's because he, he's, he's just like, look at me. I, I'm, I'm here. So, so let me, you know, let me, you bask in my light, you know, it's my sunshine and, and you'll be great too. And, and it's not how it works. So uh, I, I just say, interact and, 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 uh, and build your friends with your, uh, and your acquaintances, your network, whatever you want to call it, um, build those as you build your own uh, brand.